everyone. Welcome to Heidi's Table Talk today. I'm really glad you're here to join us. Today I have Jim Dobbins with me, and we are going to be talking about Article 29, the Comprehensive Infrastructure Study that's being requested by petition for our March 12th um, election. So join me in learning more about this important Warren article. Jim, welcome. Can you introduce yourself? Sure. Jim Dobbins. I live at Four Eagle Drive in Hudson, and I've been there for the last 41 years. And I also grew up in Nashua, so I'm fairly well familiar with this area over my lifetime. So tell me a little bit about why you decided to do this Petition Warren article. Well, first of all, this is all about the fire department, police department, um, DPW schools, and the residents' quality of life. Uh, we really do need to understand what's needed um, for this community to move forward in a very positive way. I have asked four times over the last two years um, for the Board of Selectmen to take up and execute against an infrastructure uh, study. The only person that responded to me over this period of time was Selectman Roy. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what the rest of them are afraid of, or they're, if they're afraid about hearing the truth of what, how deficient we are within this town on what's needed to execute a vision. And I was at a, a number <clears throat> of those meetings, and I've heard you over and over state that we need this more overreaching study rather than all these individual studies. Um, so you really didn't receive the response you had hoped for. Mm -hmm. um, why is this particular study so critical at this time in Hudson's history? Well, again, uh, having no response really did warrant us putting a Warren article together uh, to be submitted to the town's residents to decide. You know, Hudson is approving and developing, you know, land uh, without asking much about what the impact is to our overall town services as well as the residents' quality of life. They're not asking those important questions. Um, so now's the time to start asking them. Yeah, and I think that's great. And mm -hmm. I know this particular Warren article has many details in it. So let's look more closely at the details. And you state in the Warren article, the comprehensive infrastructure study needs to include six particular mm -hmm. items. The first is traffic. Can you talk more about what you are looking, hoping to see in the traffic study? <clears throat> That's a great question. Um, first of all, I think everybody will agree that our roads in South Hudson and through our main arteries today, they're a mess. Um, and there are major projects like the Target Flow Center or the old Hudson mm -hmm. Logistics Center, uh, the Good Life Distribution Center uh, on the Friary Project, some of the high density housing mm -hmm. that's been built, as well as other projects that are now in the planning and approval stage. Our traffic is going to be a real nightmare when the majority of these projects start to come to life. And that really has not been taken into account in a way that impacts us the most. Um, I'd also like to understand uh, the number of incidents that are going to occur. Mm -hmm. You put tractor trailers on our roads, more traffic, you're going to have more incidents. Those incidents are going to require more responses. What are we going to need for our fire department, right. both in terms of staffing and equipment, our police department? Uh, and our DPW, because as you continue to develop and expand, very basic thing, get a plow more roads. Right. And I think the other thing that I just wanted to point out to our viewers about the traffic is that we often hear of traffic studies being done for different projects through mm -hmm. the planning board process. But there isn't an overall look at all the roads and connectors in our town. And that's what I understand you're really asking right. for here. There has never been a comprehensive traffic study that's been done on every major road and back roads mm -hmm. within town. Um, Hudson has, I hate to say this, has become kind of a pass-through town mm -hmm. uh, for residents in other towns, Litchfield, Pelham, heck, I'll say even from the south, you've got folks coming up from Drake and Tingsboro mm -hmm. that are passing through Hudson. Our roadways were not designed for this type of traffic. And you know, looking for a solution is not going to be easy. All I hear from the town is, well, we're gonna work with the developers and mitigate. Right. Mitigate only means we're gonna make it less worse. <laughs> exactly. Um, and then they're coming up with this uh, uh, resurrecting, what I would just call, they're gonna put lipstick on a pig, which is the Hudson Boulevard. Right. Hudson Boulevard is not the solution. The only way that would be a solution mm -hmm. is from start to the end, you had no on and off ramps, which meant you would just flow traffic through it. Right. Because that's what this is all about. Because if you open that boulevard up, which they say is a solution, 
It's just going to put, I think there are four or five crossroads. There are five. Five crossroads that are just going to open up more land for development. Mm -hmm. And I would encourage residents to take a look at who owns that land, mm -hmm. which was bought up years ago by a lot of developers. Right. And that is another Warren article for all of you to consider this March 12th. But let us continue with mm -hmm. the, your Warren article. There continues to be concerns about staffing and equipping of our emergency services. And this is your second item. Yeah, I mean, I, um, and Heidi, I actually did it with you. We actually mm -hmm. talked to every one of the major departments, and I've had more conversations with them as well. I mean, I look at, for example, the fire department. We're short-staffed today. Mm -hmm. I don't care what anybody says. Uh, we're also short equipment today. So we really do need to meet, uh, maintain a, you know, not just a quality service, but make sure that our fire department, our police department, and our DPW are staffed, equipped, and trained to handle all the incidents that are going to occur. I mean, I haven't heard anything come back to me about how many incidents some of these major developments are going to cause. Right. Um, so. That's an important part of simple. the study. Yeah, and, it, and it's needed every day. We never know when we're gonna need emergency services. Correct. Our schools are always on our minds, and I am sure all our school, we want all of our schools to meet the needs of our mm -hmm. community. What are you looking for with that part of the study? Well, if we look at uh, the development that's occurring, I mean, as part of the study, we're now seeing some high-density housing mm -hmm. that's popping up. I mean, it's on Lowell Road today. Uh, we're seeing other housing developments that are being built. Um, and I hate to say it, I mean, I've, I saw one off Central, I think it's Central Street. They're cramming seven, eight houses mm -hmm. in this little postage lot size uh, piece of land and, and others that are occurring across town. So again, as you continue to expand high density housing as well as additional residential, what are gonna be the impacts to our school in terms of what are the services we're gonna to mm -hmm. need to provide? What is gonna be, what are gonna be the student numbers that are right. gonna be attending our schools? So again, are we staffed right? Mm -hmm. Are we equipped right? And also, how are we looking towards the future? Because this would give us a lot of insight mm -hmm. into future planning. Correct, I mean, what it'll do is it'll allow you to set the pace for the next 10 to 15 years. Mm. That study would look out at what's currently being built, what is currently being planned, and what's currently being obviously proposed. Um, you can then, you know, look at it and say, what are going to be those impacts to every single type of service that we provide within the town, as well as our school system? And again, it all impacts our quality of life. Well, and this study would really give us some insight into the quality of life mm -hmm. of living in Hudson and being a resident. Right. I mean, what the study, you know, ultimately does is it provides the roadmap for you to create what the vision of Hudson should look like in the next 10 to 15 years. Without doing an infrastructure study, you're actually eliminating the critical thinking that's needed by our leadership to develop these plans. Right. Which is important. Yes, very. So the next section is you are asking for sewer and water to be examined. I know I do not have public sewer or water, but I continue to be concerned about when might I need one or the other. You, I believe right behind you, um, mm -hmm. they extended the sewer district for the um, Target Flow Center, but yet your community does not have access to sewer. So I see this as a continuing planning process. So can you talk a little more about why sewer and water are included in this study? Yeah, I mean, I think you can look at it, you know, both from a sewer and water perspective. I mean, the simple one is water. I mean, obviously, as we continue development, do we have the water supply and mm -hmm. systems capable of supplying water uh, to the residents of the town of Hudson? And within that study, I would also look at, frankly, forever chemicals. Mm. Um, I've heard them talk about testing the waters in Litchfield, uh, I believe it's Merrimack, Milford, et cetera, because of the issues that they've had. Well, we border and pull from some of those same water sources. So from a water perspective, will we have the supply to handle the development that we have as well as we test, are we testing the quality of water? Mm -hmm. The other part of this is around SOAR. I've been in Hudson long enough to have participated in many of the SOAR discussions from the very beginning when the old Sanders facility in South Hudson wanted SOAR. Mm -hmm and they would not expand it down there, which would have allowed us to, frankly, get the residents in the south end of Hudson uh, into the SOAR lines. Uh, when the development at Walmart and Sam's was built, mm -hmm. um, I was pretty active in having those discussions, and it did center around traffic and SOAR, to be honest. Um, and the developer 
um, actually with Walmart paying for it, put in the larger pipe at, uh, at the final spot where the sore comes in and goes to Sam's Club and to Walmart. And the intent of putting that larger pipe in was to service the residents of the south end of Hudson at some point in time. Right. Um, and then all of a sudden you have a major developer come in who was not even in the SOAR district and miraculously get approval, probably because one of our board of select board, uh, one of our select board members chose to abstain for whatever reason, mm -hmm. uh, but then they allowed the SOAR to go in. Uh, we have a SOAR capacity as well with the city of yes. Nashua. Um, I'm not sure where we are in that overall capacity, but are we giving that capacity to developers into commercial and industrial sites versus giving it to residents. So what comes first, the residents or the developers? And, and that continues to be my concern with the sewer. Um, as it gets closer into the south end or expands into other areas, because mm -hmm. there were a couple of developments nor in the north area that it expanded to mm -hmm. as well. So what is our plan for our sewer allocation? And I think that's a, a great and important piece and we, of the and, study. And that needs to be studied, because no, it's not gonna be cheap to expand sewer through the balance of Hudson. Mm -hmm. But at some point in time, if you're gonna continue this development, what is your sewer plan? Right, right, exactly. So the impact fees seem to be paid by most developers and developments. How do you think those funds should be used or are you just looking for best practices on this point? Well, I mean, I think the whole impact fee allocation needs to be restudied. Mm -hmm. um, impact fees are assigned however they do it within the town when the development goes up and then those fees are used and put into, I believe, the general fund. Mm -hmm. uh, and then things are allocated out. Um, we truly are not assigning impact fees to what a development's impact is going to be to, frankly, again, our police department, our DPW, our fire, our schools, and our residents. Mm -hmm. um, I think the impact fees should be fees that uh, will continue to be assessed to the developers to offset what they are costing the town. Mm -hmm. So, for example, I know that we had to add a fire truck right. because they're putting this massive center in one fire truck It'll, it'll help, but doesn't involve the staffing. Hudson Fire Department's gonna need eight to 10 people in additional staffing. Where is that revenue gonna come from to offset those costs, as well as the training? And then in 15 years, when you gotta replace equipment, right? who's going to pay for that? Again, this study will look at the impacts or what the impact fees should be, mm -hmm. and then begin to reassess. Maybe it's a law that needs to be changed such that a town can a truly assess what a development's gonna do and impact a community and its services. Right, and, and the services are important. And as you stated earlier, we could look at what might be the increased incidences that mm -hmm. are occurring due to the development, and, which then affects the staffing. And, and, and that's true. I mean, we actually brought that to light to the planning board um, back when the old Hudson Logistics Center was coming mm -hmm. up of what we probably should expect uh, based on looking at the actual data of similar sites across the country, but I haven't seen anybody take that into account anywhere or ask any of those questions. Right, as we continue to be understaffed in emergency services. Correct. Yep. So I see that there is no funding connected to this Warren article. Can you tell us a little bit about why? <laughs> um, uh, what I would tell you is if the article passes, uh, which I'm hoping our residents will look at. You know, we really do need to get do this study to understand what we need to put within this town to maintain our quality of life. But if it passes, it will then put it back on the backs of the Board of Selectmen to have to make some choices and decisions. Mm -hmm. um, we'll then know exactly where everybody stands if they really want this study done or not. And that'll also come back into the planning board as well. So it'll position you know, where each one of these select board members stand on it to see if they really are trying to, to keep huts in the way we want it, or at least the way the residents want it. Um, and if they don't, well, game on. Right. We'll come back next year with a very, with a completely different plan and approach. Well, and I think that's a really good point, is this is making a statement, if it passes, that the residents would like to see mm -hmm. this happen. So then to see the board of selectmen make take steps towards that would be the most important well, thing for them to do. There isn't any good business that within their model doesn't include a total review and study of what they're currently doing. Mm -hmm. Is it paying dividends? Is it not? Where are the shortfalls? 
I'm not seeing that happening here. Everything is a reactionary to what transpires at the moment. Right, and, and we don't wanna be reactionary. We wanna be proactive and planning. And I hope that our board of selectmen will, con will try and be more proactive. Why do you think the board of selectmen um, are not supportive of this Warren article? Um, frankly, I, um, I think they're afraid of what it's gonna show. Mm -hmm. I think they're afraid that it's going to show the deficiency that exists today um, and really start to call out the poor planning that this town um, leadership has been providing for the last couple of years. You know, I reflected some on that point as well. And I think it's so important to get as much data and information as you can as an elected official to ensure that you're making good decisions moving forward. And as much as this may reveal what occurred in the past, it'll also set us up for an incredible set of information in order to move us forward mm -hmm. in a much more um, informed way. And I think transparency, understanding, and information can only help the Board mm -hmm. of Selectmen. Right, and I mean, what I would say to that is, every town or any business, and the, and the town is a business, mm -hmm. I believe the town's budgets on school and, and um, town are, I think exceeding a hundred million dollars now. Um, and I think that the residents of this town deserve uh, to not only participate in building the plan, but also having its leadership put a plan together that encompasses all of our thoughts, which says, here is my vision. This is what we want Hudson to be when it grows up. Right. Here are the strategic choices that we need to make as a community to deliver on that. And then what are those tactical choices within those strategic choices? Right that you need to make to deliver it. Mm -hmm. But importantly, we need to have the accountability through the system, which frankly I don't believe exists today, and that I see there's another Warren article about changing the form of government, yep. um, that I believe could help bring that accountability to play. Right. Well, and I really appreciate you going through mm -hmm. all of these points and, and looking at this. Do you have any final words for our audience? Sure, I'd just like to make a final statement yeah. if I could. Mm -hmm. um, this Warren article is all about helping our fire, police, DPW departments in getting staffed, equipped, and trained to face all of these massive developments out in front of us. I think people are gonna be surprised when they see the size of this target flow center and what it's really going to do. They're already surprised at the size of the Friary development, the Good, good for Life mm -hmm. project that's going up. Picture something four times that size. Um, there will be a lot of incidents that will continue to occur. So we want to make sure we study and learn from other towns where these places have been developed and development has grown rapidly and what that's going to mean to our services and to our schools, et cetera. You know, we want to make Hudson truly a place to call home and not an industrial commercial um, complex with traffic gridlock, which is kind of how I view it. Our leadership on the select board and the planning board really have ignored this critical piece of studying. Mm -hmm. They have not looked at the other side of the impacts. Um, so I'm hoping that the residents of this town will rise up and say, you know what, we, knew, we do need to study um, all of the decisions and all the developments that are coming into Hudson. And does it meet what our needs are? That's what we want. Um, because leadership is here to service uh, the residents of the town of Hudson, not a very small group. So please support Article 26 so we can get this study going. That's wonderful. Well, I really appreciate you being here today. And I just wanna let our audience know that this is Article 29, and it's the Comprehensive Infrastructure Study, and it does have six points. And we are looking at a much wider, more encompassing study to include all the inter interconnected pieces of the town. So please be informed. Be curious, ask questions, and come to the polls on March 12th and let your voice be heard. Thank you for listening.